you, Bob and the band. A one and a two. <laughs> Don't know where that came from. I have not seen that show from as long ago as it quit. Do you know what I'm talking about? I just sounded like Lawrence Welk. Yes. Yes. My sisters and I used to pretend like we were the Lennon sisters. Didn't we all? Hi, I'm Lois Leftwich, and welcome this morning to Unity of Dallas. I'm glad you're all here. And anyone who happened to be tuning in online, I'm glad you're here too. So I would like everyone to please join me in our opening statement. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. And now I'm going to ask Philip and Ida and Alan to join me out here, and all of you to please stand up as we sing our opening song. Chandler, and I'm one of the chaplains that are always available to pray for you after the service today. And we have several prayer chests. Uh, one is in the prayer chapel. The other one is on your left as you leave this, the building. And they are prayed over for a week and then sent to Unity Village where they're prayed over for 30 days. So please take advantage of our uh, opportunities for prayer. So uh, let's do the daily word together. Joy. Joy, joy, joy is, is mine through all, all the seasons, seasons of life. life. And we're thankful to have that joy, joy, joy down in our heart. And let's just take, a, take this into prayer. Let's take a few moments just to breathe in peace. Breathe out peace. And feel that ever-loving presence within. Divine Spirit, we give thanks for that one power, that one presence in the universe that's also in our lives. And we feel that spirit flowing through us and with us every second of our lives. We give thanks for the powers that are within us always. I affirm love that's in and through us, healing love and light flowing through every cell of our bodies. Feel strength. Let's take a few moments 
to give gratitude for these powers that are all within us into the silence. Thank you, Spirit, of these wonderful attributes that are always there for us just to call upon them and ask. And we know that Spirit is with us always. And wherever we are, God is. And God is with us. And I am in, with love peace and harmony goes with me wherever I go. So as we go forth this day with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy, we go forth with love and feel that love unfolding in our lives today, tomorrow, and every day. God is with us. I am with God. And with God, we are safe as the love enfolds. And we say, thank you, thank you, thank you, living, loving spirit. Amen. Please join us again in singing Love is the Answer.
then trouble's gonna lose me. Why they leave me behind? And I'll stay in the proudly in true peace of mind. I'm talking about a, I'm talking about a way. From some long ago we just flew to Kansas City. What do you think? <laughs> oh my goodness. So I touched Rod a while ago. I said maybe in my next life this will give me the energy to be a saxophone player. So some of you youngins, maybe you'll see me in my next life here. So you know it's me. I'm Reverend Deb Stovall and I'm so happy to be here to give the message today. And um, I am feeling some sadness as we all are, that Reverend James is not with us, but that is the purpose of my message today, is, uh, as he always said, upward and onward, and that's what we're doing. And so I picked, of course, love, and you know, Mary's prayer, I was sitting there thinking, Mary, how'd you know what my message was? But she didn't, but she brought up so many things in her prayer the powers, right? The powers of love, the power of love, which I'll be talking about, and how powerful it is. So let's look at the healing power of love. I've got some, some quotes by different people that we uh, follow, Eric Butterworth, and of course, Paul the Apostle is 1 Corinthians 13:13. 13, 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And he was sending a letter to the church in Corinth. Of course, Jesus told him, go and spread the word, spread the gospel. So he had a church in Corinth, and he would write them letters and go visit them and make sure that they were okay. And this is something that he told them. These three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Let's look at why that's true. God is love. Charles Fillmore, who is one with his wife, the, um, the great thought creator of our theology, he says, God is love. God is me. And I am that love expressing 
in and through my loving heart. Wow. So I am love because God made me and God is love. I am made of the energy of God, which is love. It's so hard to get, isn't it? I look in the mirror and I'm just the body that needs to lose 10 more pounds. <laughs> I, how do you carry your COVID weight two years later, right? I'll tell you how. <laughs> you keep chocolate hidden. You have, brown, oh, now we have Girl Scout cookies, right? We're in the grocery store the other day and I can't find Gerald. He went with me. And I'm like, where'd he go? He's over at the Girl Scout stand. <laughs> And I go, I go, what are you doing? We're on a diet. And he goes, I'm supporting the Girl Scouts of America. <laughs> you cannot argue with that as he buys four boxes. And I went, great. So um, that, that's what happens at our house. Yeah, that's what happens. So I am love. That's who I am. I'm love. So we grew up right in Sunday school hearing, uh, you need to have a relationship with God. I remember my Sunday school teacher said, we're probably about eight. She goes, hold up your hand if you have a relationship with God. And I thought, uh-uh. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Debbie, hold up your hand. <laughs> okay. So about six months ago, I got it. I got it. I'm a slow learner. <clears throat> if I am love, I am the love that God is. If I love me, I have a relationship with God. I couldn't figure out how to have a relationship with him that was sitting out there on a cloud. That's what I thought when I was a child. And then I come to unity and I find out that God is within. God is not out there. Well, that took away the judgment part. <clears throat> it took away, um, <clears throat> you know, I better be careful what I think because God's listening. It took all that away. There is, God is not a person. God is not up there on a cloud judging me. God is within. And I feel God within because... I love myself. Feeling God within still doesn't connect with me. Loving myself does. And that took a long time, you all. I was raised by wolves. So, <laughs> <clears throat> seriously, they were cute. They, they were cute wolves. But my parents were 18 and 20 when they had me. And they didn't know mm, much. They... <laughs> They did the best they could, right? We always say that. They did the best they could, and it's a great line to move on, to move on into forgiveness, to move, on, to move forward with your healing work if you grew up that way. But they, they didn't love themselves. They did not love themselves. And if your parents didn't love themselves, they cannot pass it on to their children. It's called the blessing. Did you get the blessing? I didn't get the blessing until much, much later. And then I got the blessing. And I think that's what happens in this church a lot, is that people get the blessing through our theology because it's so beautiful. So Charles Fillmore, the founder of our theology, <coughs> said, excuse me, I've got allergies, cedar fever. <coughs> Thank you very much. As a spiritual power, which love is, goes far beyond feelings, attachments, or individual relationships, when I ran across this, I thought, what? I thought love was my love for my kids, my love for Gerald, my love for my grandkids. That's what love is. What do you mean? It goes far beyond. Where does it go far beyond to? Love in divine mind, which is God mind, joins everything in the universe. Everything is joined together. So I begin to list it in my head. What am I joined to? I know I'm joined to nature. I know that tree and I are first cousins, right? 
I know that um, I'm joined to other people. I know that I'm joined to the Grand Canyon. When I saw it a few years ago, I had an overwhelming spiritual experience that I just started crying. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm looking at God, right? If you've been to the Grand Canyon. Um, and you know what else I thought? I like these first time things. I like these ahas. The crystals I have beside my head on the table, that is God. That is God, because I'm joined to everything. And I know, I mean, crystals are a big thing in New Thought and New Age, right? Everybody had to have crystals, and we went out and bought big crystals to put in our house. And people were talking about the energy coming from crystals, and I was like, what? I don't get it, but I go buy some. And I, I did, I bought some, put them beside. I don't know if they helped me sleep, but anyway, they're there. And you know why they're there? I put them there three years ago. They're there to remind me I am one with everything. I looked at them this morning and I went, uh-huh, yep. <laughs> we are, we are one. Everything, we're one with everything. So beautiful. Love is a principle. I'm teaching the laws in the Explorers. Come to the Explorers if you haven't been. So a dynamite group of 30 to 40 sometimes. It's so we dig, we explore. That's why we're called the Explorers. So I'm teaching the laws right now. Love is a law. Love is a principle. What does that mean? Gravity is a law. Gravity is a principle. It does not change. Have you ever just, maybe some of you all have, levitated? But for the most part, most of us are stuck to the ground, aren't we? <clears throat> most of us are stuck. So gravity is a law. Gravity is a principle. Love is a law. How do you define gravity? Oh, well, it keeps you on the earth, uh, keeps you from floating. You can't define these principles. You can't define these laws. You can't define love. Well, it's fuzzy, uh, it feels good. No, 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 define love. Uh, uh, can you see? You, there's nowhere to go with it. It just is. And the beautiful part of it is that God created it. God created it. God created these emotions that are within us. They're inherent. I call them spiritual genetics. We came in with the law of love is part of us. Now the trick is, do you want to plug into it, right? Love does its healing work. Let's go back to healing because it is connected to a consciousness of compassion. From that consciousness, we see clearly through the eyes of love. Compassion is part of that. All created by God. It's all created by the maker. It's all created by divine mind. In unity, we say it's an idea. These are ideas in God mind is where they came from. If I love someone, I have compassion for them, do I not? And isn't that beautiful, that compassion is part of our experience? And I think about our congregation right now. Without our minister, a lot of us are grieving. There are a lot of emotions in this room. I know that. I've talked to a lot of people. And we'll go through a transitional time. We'll go through a healing time. And that's expected, and it's a process. It's a divine process, because everything is divine. And we'll move through it together. We'll move through it with love. With love. And I encourage everyone not to let your egos take over during this time. Reverend Barb White and I are going to start a support group next Sunday after church, if you'd like to come. 
and we will be offering support and space where you can, you can feel your feelings and talk about them. It is a tender time for a congregation. When I came nine years ago, we didn't have a minister. And um, it, was, it was a tender time. I could feel it. I was new to the church, but I could feel the, the vacuum. I will be your spiritual liaison uh, for however many months until we find a new minister. I'll be providing pastoral counseling if you're ill or somebody's in the hospital uh, or you need counseling, I'll be available. I am a licensed therapist. And, uh, and we will go forward, upward, and onward because we are a strong congregation and we have a high consciousness. There's a very high consciousness in this church. And we know that, and I think we feel it. We feel it in our classes. We feel it in here. We feel it when we're together and we say, I love you. I've never been in a church where people are always going, love you, I love you. Or come up and just stare at you in the eyes and say, I love you. No, nope, didn't happen in, in the Presbyterian church. I never <laughs> felt that. Ne never had anyone do that. But it's in this church. I think it's in this church because Charles and Myrtle Fillmore planted the seeds, right? Eric Butterworth, another one of our really renowned ministers who preached in the 60s, 70s, a little bit in the 80s, and his congregations were so large that he was at, um, I believe it's called Lincoln Center, part of... Avery Fisher Hall. Avery Fisher Hall. Yeah, which is part of Carnegie Hall, yeah. correct? Yeah. And uh, he had a thousand, oh, yes. thousand people at a time. He was a brilliant man. Faith and love are ideas in divine mind, he said. Faith and love. So we're bringing faith into this equation. Faith is another law. They are brothers, a team that working together perceive and attract the good. If you are wanting to do some healing yourself, if you are wanting to attract something into your life, know that if you have faith, have faith, and I call faith, you expect it. If even a little faith in God is put to work, it will grow. Everything that could hinder its perfect expression will be removed. Isn't that interesting? Another spiritual gene. So if I expect a new car, right? I got to expect it. We talked about this last week in Explorers. If I have faith that I'm going to get a new car, then I expect it, right? Which we say in unity, setting an intention. Be careful because every thought you think is an intention. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's so scary. <laughs> that's so scary. Every thought you think is a prayer. What do you want to manifest? That's the question. What do you want to manifest? And everything is removed. Everything that would hinder you is removed. One of the greatest, I'm going to go back. Let's see if I can go back. Am I that smart? Oh, yes. One of the greatest obstacles with which man has to contend with is placing your faith in fear. Okay? Now, that's really something to think about. If you're fearful, oh, I'm so afraid of this and that. Watch the news. You'll get real fearful. Yeah, you'll get real, real, real fearful. You're putting your faith in fear. And faith is a law. So if you put your faith in fear, you're going to manifest fear. You're going to get in your car, start driving. Oh, I wonder if they're going to hit me. I wonder if they are going to run a red light. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Yeah? You will operate from fear. 
Be careful where you put your faith. Be careful. According to my faith, let it be done unto you. According to thy faith, let it be done unto you. So this is Matthew. He was healing the blind man. And he said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And he could see. That's how strong our faith is. The key to spiritual healing is faith with love. Put them together. These powers work together. These are two of the 12 powers. Work them together. I have faith and I'm connected to the love that I am. It's a win. You all, it's a win. If I have faith, I expect, and I'm connected to my spirit instead of my ego, right? It's going to happen, whatever you're asking for. Healing is not a process. It's a revelation. This is Butterworth. Healing is an awakening to that which God is and that which we are in spirit and in truth. I kind of disagree a little bit being a therapist because I think healing could be a process. <laughs> Just saying, I've witnessed it and experienced it. Um, but I see what he's saying because once you get it, you get it, don't you? Once you awaken, you awaken. Once you shift, it's called a shift in your paradigm, you get it. You're like, oh my gosh, how did I ever think that was so? It's this way. When someone works with you or you read something or you see something and you say, wow, why didn't I ever see that? And I call it putting on a new pair of glasses. I call it putting on a new pair of glasses and you see the whole world differently. If you've never done shadow work, if you've never done shadow work, it is a beautiful thing. I think Al's going to be talking to us at Town Hall about that, doing shadow work. And get rid of those obstacles that are in there. I call it your backpack. What's in your backpack? Ooh, I don't want to look in my backpack. I just keep carrying it. Ugh. You know, I got mom stuff and I got dad stuff. That's what's in your backpack. I always talk about this. You are what was said to you between the ages of zero and seven. I know, Libby. Libby's going, whoo. <laughs> Me too. We were programmed. Our hard drive was programmed between the ages of zero and seven. We are who we are. The good, the bad, and the ugly, right? That's what's in our backpack. And I always say, Open up your backpack and see what's in there. Keep what you want. Keep what you want. My dad was amazing <coughs> worker bee. And I've got it. I've got his work ethic. But there are a few other things I've got too <laughs> that, that aren't mine. And that I, I continually give them back to him now. You know, Dad, you forgot some stuff. <laughs> it's in my backpack. It's right here. So let's look at <clears throat> the next slide. How do we practice being love? Charles Fillmore called our theology practical Christianity because he wants us to practice it. He said, you know, we can talk all day long. He was very intellectual, as you can tell from his writings. And we can read all this stuff, and it's so nice, and then we'll go home. <laughs> and then he goes, uh-uh, we're going to practice what we just read. Jesus says, love your enemies, not because they deserve it, but because you deserve it. Wow. 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 If I don't like someone or I'm upset about something someone said, they don't care, do they? Darn it. They're not over there saying, oh, I shouldn't have said that or, or, you know, I need to apologize to her. 
No, I need to forgive them, and I don't have to go to them to forgive them. I just forgive them in my heart, and then I'm clear, and I feel good. I feel good. Forgive others, serve others. Oh, my goodness, you all, whatever you're doing. I love what Tina does, Tina Rosewood. She loves to go to the grocery store and make everybody feel good. Isn't that beautiful? So she walks around the store. I, hopefully she has a basket with her and, <laughs> and a few items in there. But she tells people, you know, that they look beautiful or uh, smiles. She loves to smile at people. What a wonderful ministry. It's a ministry. Kind of hold up your hand. There she is. It's a ministry is what she does. So if you're not serving others, figure out something, some way. It doesn't have to be volunteer work, even though she is a volunteer minister at Tom Thumb. She needs to get a badge. <laughs> Reverend, Reverend Tina. Practice positive thinking. It's a win. You think negatively, it shows on your face. Did you know that? You can tell when somebody thinks negative thoughts. It shows. It tells. So you're not hiding it. And you also don't attract positive people. You attract negative people. So if you're attracting negative people, guess why? There you go. Oh, my goodness. And the last one. I wish I could erase it. Yeah. I wish, there it is. I wish I could erase it. Get, get, just a second, let me get my white out. <laughs> our ego, our ego judges, judges, judges. The reason why is because our ego is made to discern. It's made to judge. It is made to judge. It judges how far that car is away. It judges whether or not I'm going to run this red light because nobody's around. It, it does a lot of judging, and it protects us. But it also can go into off of the deep end, and Charles Fillmore called it the adverse ego. The adverse ego gets in trouble because it makes up stories, doesn't it? It makes up, it assumes, it makes up assumptions. Yes, it's so creative. It probably writes all these novels that we read. <laughs> Different kinds of novels, but it is very creative. So we have to watch our ego. I call it, sometimes I put it in the crate. I say, I'm going to crate you, ego. I don't want to listen to you right now. Or you're wrong. You're wrong. You're making up stuff. Don't bother me right now. I'm trying to stay in the power of positive thinking. So 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7. Let's say this together. And think about it as you say it. How are you doing in these categories? Ready? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no account of wrongs, love takes no pleasure in evil, but rejoices in the truth, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Boy, that's a good checklist, isn't it? That's a good checklist. So let's, and by the way, we have fried chicken at Town Hall. Just saying. <laughs> a little enticement there. <clears throat> let's take all of this, all of this into meditation. Get comfortable. <clears throat> Take a deep breath. 
knowing that that is the breath of God. It is the breath that keeps us alive. It is the breath that is life. It is the energy of God. And we feel gratitude. We feel gratitude for the breath. We feel gratitude for life. Feel gratitude for someone that you dearly love. <clears throat> and know this place within you that feels gratitude is your spirit, is your spiritual self, is who you really are. And we feel that spirit part of us that has come to have an earthly experience. And we are in gratitude to our spirits for guiding us through our lives. We see a light, a light within us, a light in our heart. And we see this light getting brighter and brighter as it moves out of each one of us into the person next to us. into the next person. We move our light throughout this congregation, knowing we are all one. Knowing this light joins each one of us to the other, and knowing this light is God. We see this congregation, this room, with a bright light shining from each one of us as it merges into one light. We feel the warmth of the light. We feel the love that the light is. And we are grateful. We are grateful for the light that we are, the light that this church is. And we affirm that this light is our growth as spiritual beings. This light is the involvement of this church. And we are grateful for the light, for the love that we are, for the faith that we have. The faith in our church, the faith in the people the souls that make up our church, that move our church forward, we are already grateful. We are affirming this growth. And we affirm the love that we have for each other. And we say thank you Thank you, thank you. Father, Mother, God, in the name and power of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Deb. I love you. <laughs> Well, I needed to hear all of that today. I imagine there's a few other people here who did too. Now it's time for our offertory. There's a number of ways that you can give. We've got people <laughs> holding little bags somewhere. Yes? Yeah, there they are. Oh, they remembered. Yay, people. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was going to say, wouldn't it be cool if you could reach in and pull out a rabbit? No, it's not that kind of bag. <laughs> you just put in. <laughs> oh, no, try. See if there's a rabbit. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there's the bags here in church with the people. We've also got an app called GIFT, G-I-V-T. We also have a website where you can go to the website and give that way. There's little boxes. We make it so easy. And uh, if you get that done right away, then you can just relax and enjoy another song by Joe Ellen. Oh, let's do our statement first, though. I always forget that thing. It's very important. <laughs> okay, offertory blessing, please. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Spirit. Day after day, I must face a world of strangers where I don't belong. I'm not that strong It's nice to know That there's someone who will be there You're always there You always care When there's no getting over that rainbow When my smallest of dreams won't come true So many times when the city seems to be without a friendly face, a lonely place, it's nice to know that there's someone I can turn to and you'll always smile, it's all worthwhile when there's no getting over that rainbow, when my small Forgotten half their promises, they're not unkind, just hard to find. We'll look at you, and I know that I can learn to live without the rest. I found the best when there's no getting over that rainbow. When my small
much, Joellen and Roderick. That was gorgeous. Thank you. And Bob and the band. Okay, we have got announcements. First of all, make sure you join us this afternoon for coffee and conversation. And then from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock, we're going to have a town hall, and you can ask questions and share concerns, whatever you, is on your heart. Please bring it, share it, and let's join together so that we can move forward. Next thing we've got is not up there. Uh, okay. Huh? Oh, no, I've got tons of things. It, it just didn't switch yet. Got it. Um, yes, no, way more things than I want to No, I do want to talk about every single one of them. Um, personal chaplains. <laughs> if you are interested in having your very own personal chaplain, you can sign up at the table out there. Uh, this is somebody we've got. I don't know. What is our grand total of chaplains in this church? Does anyone know? Grand total. How many chaplains do we have? Thirteen. Lucky number thirteen. Anyway, of those 13 people, one of them can be your personal chaplain who you can call when you need something. They will get in touch with you at whatever frequency you prefer and are not going to bother you. They're just going to be there for you. Uh, we've also got, you know what? I'm going to read this. That is too hard to read. Uh, the book Nook. You got to visit it. It's a great place to visit. Uh, we've got special Valentine's gifts in the book nook. We've got books in the book nook. Um, basically, a fun place to shop. And I've already said the town hall, so now we will move on to things that are coming up this week. We have our next free family movie night, and that is this coming Friday from 6.30 to 9 p.m., and we will be watching one of my personal favorite films, which is Inside Out. It's a Disney film. And if you haven't seen it, you owe it to yourself. If you've got kids, bring them, but stay with them. This is not a drop off and go do something else kind of thing. <laughs> this is all be together with the children and have fun. <laughs> and, and what? Oh, yes, absolutely, of course. What would it be without free popcorn? And there will be beverages. Not adult beverages, but beverages. We will have water and tea. Uh, we've also got the Divine Sisters are meeting next Saturday, the 17th, from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. with a return favorite, Sharon Crowder from Unity of Grapevine, will be the guest speaker. She spoke here last year. And her topic is The Power of Intention, based on Wayne Dyer's book. You can bring sort of a potluck kind of thing, something to share with four people. And now we turn to this side of it. Oh, golly, gosh. OK, you may have noticed that there are some stuffed animals in the audience. Yes. You want to stand up and model? <laughs> OK. Anyway, uh, this is uh, something that we do every year. And this is the 30th year that we've done it. So if you feel so moved, bring a new, unused, tags-on stuffed animal to share with the, um, it's the Dallas Children's Advocacy Center. And you can bring bears, bunnies, puppies, not live ones. And um, basically, at the end of the month, all of those will be blessed. We will bless them as a congregation. You can sit there and hug them during the service. Just don't sneeze or cough on them. Um, and uh, we will then carry those over to the, let me say those words by reading them because I don't have them memorized yet, Dallas Children's Advocacy Center. A couple of more things coming up. We have Sunday, next Sunday, and I think Deb mentioned this. Oh, and we also have fried chicken, I heard, at the town hall meeting. Someone, I, where did I hear that? I don't know, it just sort of cropped up. <laughs> anyway, um, Deb will also be leading, uh, along with Reverend Barbara White, next Sunday, a transition support group, and we will be processing and working through the transitions that we're all experiencing. And it's important to process these things. Yes, it's also important to do as Eric Butterworth said, but I think it's a process as well. 
Then you get the revelation. Okay. Um, and we're very lucky to have Deb leading us through that. And you can find other things in our e-news. And last but not least, this is a big holiday week. Lunar New Year. I think Alan's doing something very cool today for Lunar New Year. Is that, that's part of the Lunar New Year, or is that, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're the dragon. Yeah, it's, it's the Targaryen year, <laughs> if you're into Game of Thrones. Um, they were the dragon people. Uh, oh, 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 let's see. I missed one. Um, oh, this was the anniversary brunch. Free 80th anniversary brunch is coming up in March. Don't forget about that. Look for that in the e-news. And uh, we also have workshops with Tony Boehm. Now moving on to the big holiday week with the Lunar New Year, the Super Bowl, Mardi Gras, and Valentine's Day. Huh? Okay, it's a lot. But we're going to be celebrating, and we hope that you will have a great time this week. And now it is time to come up here for you to stand up and sing. this week and practice our faith and our love with each other and with ourselves. And the congregation said, Amen. Amen.